So you survived all the encounters and got to Nezirak, the boss encounter, for the Root of the Nightmare Raid. And what an encounter it is. This encounter is going to take everything that you've learned up to date and kind of combine them to again finish the raid. First off, as far as team compositions, you're going to ha have two people who are runners, similar to what you were doing in the very first encounter. Again, in this case, you're going to have both darkness and light that you have to connect through a series of nodes to get to the end of the raid. While they're doing that, you're going to have four people doing ad clear. You want to probably split those up. Again, depending if you're playing contest mode or not, you want to split those up on right and left, and you want to have probably some of the people also concentrate in the middle. A couple key things as far as ads. There's a lot of ads, so use things that will help you with ads. Don't be shy, especially in contest mode, about using wells and supers because you will get them back through killing ads. So again, if you need those for survival, do that. And again, as far as ads, there's tons of cabal. There's also centurions that will show up on the right, middle, and left at different parts of the encounter. Those you'll need to take out, especially as the runners get towards the end of the room. As far as the runners go, I'll put up this infographic that kind of shows you what you're doing, okay? And this is one of the reasons why the ad clears will have to continue to advance through the room because you'll be starting from the beginning, from spawn, from where the two seeds are, because again, there's a seed that's on the right that's dark and a seed that's on the left that's light, right? And you'll need to have two runners for those again. Their job is really to continue to connect the plates until they get all the way to the end to six. And again, it's similar to Garden Salvation as once you do you know, one color and the other color, that's where you, the boss will be ready for DPS. Nezarak is going to put his hatred on you on three people that are in the fire team. And he's going to, that's, that's how you aggro and he chases those people around. Very early in the encounter, you're going to want to shoot his chest. Someone's going to want to to take that off of them because over time, that's actually going to lead to white mechanic if you're not careful. Take his hatred, but keep him generally pointed toward the fire team. The reason is, is because people are going to have to shoot his two shoulders, right? Similar to Walk. The reason for that is he has a white mechanic that happens halfway through the encounter. And to prevent that, you need to basically create a protective zone for everyone on the fire team. You're not going to know if that's on light or dark until you finish shooting the shoulders. Once you finish shooting the shoulders, you'll see that. It'll kind of glow up. You'll see if it's dark or if it's light. At that point, the person, so if it's on dark, let's say it's on dark, for instance, the person who has the buff, again, the buff you get from shooting the orbs, We'll need to go over to the dark side and basically shoot the dark one. That will make a protective zone where you'll get a buff that lands for about 15 seconds. Everyone in the fire team is going to want to go near that because if you don't have that buff when he does his white mechanic, it will kill you, which will lead, obviously, to you not completing the encounter. One of the tips I would give you is that I would get in there initially, kind of run around, right, to keep him occupied, and then you'll notice at some point he'll glow a little bit white, like he's getting ready to do the white mechanic. At that point, dip back in, get the buff at that point. At that point, Everyone can go back to their previous locations and complete their roles because he's going to do white mechanic, but it won't matter because you have protection. So play continues and you continue to work up and, you know, through those six locations. OK, and then I'll put this infographic up here. Once the six are complete, you're going to want to find a location where you're going to DPS. My fire team that I was in when I completed this, we picked the location that's actually indicated on this infographic. So get in that location. OK, and it's a fairly lengthy DPS cycle. And at that point, use wells. We were using rockets, Izignagis, you know, using Gallahorns, we get wolf pack rounds, and continue to pile on him. Once he finishes up, he's gonna go immune. And at that point, you start the whole encounter over again. Same mechanics throughout this entire thing. He has three phases with an enrage. And once you get past then, there's a the final stand. For final stand, actually the final stand is not that beefy on this boss. So at that point, use whatever you have left. If you have outbreak, swap over to your outbreak, take him out, and you finish the encounter. So it's a super fun encounter. I, I'd say the biggest thing is just survivability because he's kind of a jerk and he will chase you around the room. So, you know, do the things that allow you to be survivable, whether that's, you know, being on your hunter, going invisible, using your wells, using bubbles, things like that. But again, use that to survive. DPS isn't too bad. That's the video, guys. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.